On June 17, members of the House of Representatives lined up to speak in support of H.R. 2745, the United Nations Reform Act of 2005. One of those speaking was House Majority Leader Tom DeLay, a Texas Republican, who concluded his remarks with this amazing statement. Quote, if and when these reforms are enacted, Mr. Speaker, the world will be safer and stronger. The American people will be assured that their money is being well spent. And the United Nations Charter to prevent wars, protect human rights, and advance the cause of human freedom will be reaffirmed." End quote. As the massive Iraq oil for food scandal and a number of other high-profile UN scandals have made clear, the United Nations is a corrupt, nearly bottomless sinkhole of tyrants, thieves, rapists, and world government schemers. Representative DeLay's starry-eyed assertion that the mere passing of a law will make the world safer and stronger and transform the UN into a paragon of global virtue and righteous governance is simply dumbfounding. But Tom DeLay is not the only one caught up in the mantra of UN reform. It seems to have become a near universal obsession with Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives alike, all in agreement that the UN must be reformed, and soon. The first basic question that begs to be asked is this. Is the UN even reformable? Consider these examples of UN corruption and criminality that have leaked into the media during the past several months. For the past several years, the Congo and the Central African Republic have been convulsed by horrible tribal conflict and civil war. Blue-helmeted UN peacekeepers and other UN personnel were sent there ostensibly to help refugees in the area. But the UN soldiers and aid workers are now being charged with sexually exploiting and raping the women and young girls they were supposedly there to protect. In a parallel development, human rights workers are now charging that UN troops knowingly and intentionally gun down unarmed civilians in a crowded market in the Congo's Ituri province in March. Then, of course, there is the Iraq Oil for Food program. Last December, 60 members of Congress called on Kofi Annan to resign from his top UN post due to his involvement in this fiasco, which has become infamous as the biggest swindle in the history of humanitarian aid. In order to stymie congressional investigations, Annan appointed his own so-called investigation, headed by his pal, Paul Volcker, former chairman of the Federal Reserve. The Volcker inquiry ran interference for Annan and dragged its feet. And as its critics predicted, it finally issued a report that turned out to be a whitewash. Annan claimed total exoneration. Yet on June 14, a memo surfaced showing Annan's direct personal connection to the scandal, reigniting calls for Annan's resignation. Notwithstanding these and other examples of blatant corruption that permeates the world body, the UN's advocates and cheerleaders now are proposing to reform it by giving it even more power. For example, the UN's Law of the Sea Treaty asserts UN control over seven-tenths of the Earth's surface, including all U.S. territorial waters. This ambitious UN gambit amounts to the largest attempt at territorial conquest in history. Incredibly, the Bush administration has announced its support for the Law of the Sea Treaty. President Bush has also done a flip-flop on the International Criminal Court, or ICC. He now says that the U.S. will support the ICC, which is a U.N.-created court that claims the authority to try American citizens. Even more astounding is the administration's proposal to establish a 75,000-man U.N. Army called the Global Peace Operations Initiative. This UN Army is to be funded largely from the already overstrained U.S. Pentagon budget and to be equipped and trained by our severely overtaxed military forces. The United Nations Reform Act of 2005, put forward by House Republicans, supports Kofi Annan's own proposal to create a UN peacebuilding commission. This new creation, according to Congressman Ron Paul, a Republican from Texas, will serve as the UN enforcement arm or, quote, the internationalization of what were formerly internal affairs of sovereign nations." End quote. It should be clear that when bipartisan internationalists talk about UN reform, they mean something totally opposite of what everyday Americans expect. They fully intend to centralize power under the UN by giving it an independent military 
a court system, and an executive branch to enforce UN decrees and interfere in the affairs of sovereign and independent nations. There is no other name for what they are building other than world government, and there is no name to call what they are attempting to do other than treason. Here is a second question, more important than the first, that also must be addressed. Is the UN a good idea gone bad, or was it a bad idea from the very beginning? The UN was created in part by American one-worlders at the New York-based Council on Foreign Relations, or CFR, along with communists from other nations. It should be remembered that the infamous U.S. trader and Soviet agent Alger Hiss was in charge of the UN founding conference in 1945 and was a key architect of the UN Charter. He was assisted by many others of similar ilk. Their goal? To establish the framework of an incipient world government that gradually would be empowered and transformed into a global socialist dictatorship. On June 17, the U.S. House of Representatives passed H.R. 2745, the United Nations Reform Act of 2005, by a vote of 221 to 184. UN supporters on the left and so-called UN critics on the right are uniting in demands to reform and to strengthen the UN. But some things cannot be reformed. We would not think of trying to reform, for instance, the Mafia, the Nazi Party, or the Communist Party. Neither should we try to do so with the UN. It is not a good idea gone bad. The UN was rotten from the start. It is no more reformable than was Al Capone, or Adolf Hitler, or Joseph Stalin. Contact your congressman and let him know that for the United States to remain an independent nation, we must withdraw from the United Nations. Insist that he support legislation to do so. Contact your family, friends, and neighbors and tell them to go to www.getusout.org to learn more about the real agenda of those who are promoting UN reform. Become involved with the John Birch Society's effort to get the U.S. out of the United Nations and to get the United Nations out of the U.S. while there is still time.